Welcome to another video on solving basics for trig equations. We're going to look at the equation sine theta equals negative square root 3 over 2 today. And it's a pretty simple process to solve basic trig equations. Just remember that many of the things that you would do when finding an exact value, we will use in this process. You're just working almost in the opposite direction. So when I solve an equation that's in this format, I like to think, which angles have a sign of negative square root 3 over 2. So have that as your overarching thought, your goal, um, and you'll feel much more comfortable as you go through this process and find your solutions. Okay, so here's an outline of what we're going to do. In step one, we'll take care of our analysis. So we'll look at two things. One, we'll find out which quadrants we should be working in, and we'll determine that using a nice little acronym, ASTC. More on that as we work the problem. You'll also find your reference triangle, and that'll help you get your reference angle so that in step two, you can actually determine your angle answers. So you're basically going to synthesize your analysis in the first step uh, for the second step, and that'll help you get your solution. So let's do this now for sine theta equals negative root three over two. As we start, remember that we're thinking what angles, which angle or angles have a sine of negative root three over two. So let's go ahead and do a quick labeling to our quadrants. Think ASTC standing for all students take classes. That's just a quick way to help you remember. And work your way around from quadrant one and label with these letters. And these letters actually tell you which trig functions are positive in their corresponding quadrant. So in quadrant one, all of them are positive, all six. In quadrant two, only sine and its reciprocal cosecant are positive, all the rest are negative. And then hopefully you can make the jump. In quadrant three, it's tangent and cotangent that are positive. And in quadrant four, it's cosine and it's reciprocal secant. So looking back to our problem, we're looking for a sine that's negative root three over two. So we want our sine to be negative. All right, that means we can't be in one, we can't be in two, we must be in three. So let's sketch that in, just a quick little terminal side for an angle here, and in quadrant four. Okay, so we have our quadrants. Now we're ready to talk about our reference triangle. If you aren't familiar with special right triangles and their properties and how they work on the unit circle, I'm going to post a link to a playlist in the video description. Be sure to check that out. I'll go into a lot of detail in some of those videos on the special right triangles and how they work with the unit circle. Um, so we're going to assume that we are familiar with those and we're looking for the triangle where the sine is negative root three over two, or we're just going to say the value root three over two. We're gonna work in the first quadrant because all we wanna find is that reference angle. So recall that sine is the y coordinate or that vertical leg of a triangle uh, drawn into the unit circle. So that's going to be this triangle right here. Okay, you have our special right triangle. The longer leg is that y coordinate, square root three over two. The short leg would be one half. And this is our 60, 30, 90 special right triangle. So our reference angle is that central angle here, 60 degrees. And you can solve a trig equation in degrees. Most often, I think we're working in radians. So let's go ahead and adjust 60 degrees to radians. So we know that that's pi over three radians. So as we move on to step two, we know that the reference angle for each of our angles, the ones in quadrant three and four, the reference angle here is going to be equal to pi over three. And that's gonna help us in our determination for our answers. Okay, remember that a reference angle is just the amount of rotation from the terminal side of an angle to the x-axis. Okay, so let's go ahead and determine these angles. We'll start with the one in quadrant three. So we know that we're rotating halfway around, that would be pi, and then we're rotating pi over three past pi. So really we just need to add those two together. It may help you to write pi as three pi over three, just you already have that common denominator. And that angle in quadrant three must be four pi over three. Okay, so that's one of our solutions. Now let's name the angle in quadrant four. So that's if we rotate all the way around and are right here. So we almost rotated a full rotation, which would be two pi or six pi over three. 
sticking with that common denominator. Remember that our reference angle here is pi over 3, so we can just subtract pi over 3 from 6 pi over 3, and that'll get us our quadrant 4 angle. So that's going to be 5 pi over 3. And these are our two answers on the unit circle, or we say between 0 and 2 pi. Now you may not actually need to do such an intensive calculation to name these angles. Um, if you are very familiar with your unit circle, if you've been practicing with trig equations a bunch, um, you'll probably just know that the angles in quadrant 3 and 4 with the reference angle pi over 3 are these two, 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3, respectively. But if not, we went all the way through it, so you can be confident you'll get the correct answer. Now to finish up, let's take a look at how we could solve the same equation, but say you'd been asked to find all solutions. You just need to make a simple little adjustment to your original answers. We're going to write an equation that says 4 pi over 3 plus all its coterminal angles, and we'll do the same thing for 5 pi over 3. Remember, a coterminal angle is just angles that share the same terminal side, so what we were looking at in our analysis, but you just rotate different amounts to get there. So let's start out, we'll write our first equation. We're going to have two if we are representing all solutions. We say that theta can be four pi over three plus two pi k. And that's the way we say four pi over three plus all its coterminal angles. Breaking that down just a little bit, remember we say two pi because that's a full rotation from your starting point. And k simply represents an integer all integers, and you substitute in different integers, and you'll get different coterminal angles. So if you substitute any of those back into your original equation, you'll find that the sine of that angle is negative root 3 over 2. So let's do that also for 5 pi over 3. So we say theta can also be 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, all its coterminal angles. And this is how we represent all solutions to our equation. All right, hopefully this helped you with solving basic trig equations. You have a really good foundation here, so just keep practicing. You'll get really good at solving equations in this style, and you'll be ready to tackle even more advanced equations. Um, be sure to check links in the video description. I'll post uh, a lot more examples worked out.